The Kia Telluride and the Hyundai Palisade have been runaway hits ever since they were introduced. For 2023, they both get mid-cycle updates and I finally have them together for a comparison video. So why are these two such popular models and of the two, which one is best? Let's go for a drive and find out. Both of these large SUVs are powered by a 3.8 liter V6 engine and it's naturally aspirated. It's not turbocharged or supercharged, nor does it have any sort of electrical help from a hybrid system. For large SUVs like these two, the engine has an adequate amount of power and grunt. It's not something really sporty like a Acura MDX Type S, but when you're just commuting to and from work or taking the kids to school and then work, it's more than enough. Now, admittedly, I did not get a chance to fully load up these SUVs with passengers and cargo or tow something. But again, I think that it's enough power with this V6. Most of the time when you accelerate from a stop, you'll see the RPM needle hits around 2,500 to 3,000 RPMs. When you're going up hills or when you're overtaking someone, again, it will jump up to that RPM range but the engine only really picks up after about 3000 RPMs, which is normal for naturally aspirated V6s. The peak torque is at around 5200 RPMs and the peak power is reached at 6000 RPMs. So yeah, it makes sense that the engine really pulls only after 3000. Paired with this engine is an eight speed automatic transmission and it is smooth at changing gears. You pretty much never notice them. However, it's not the fastest to react, whether you stab on the throttle or you switch the car into sport mode and start to use either the paddle shifters in the Palisade or the gear selector in this Kia because it doesn't have paddle shifters. So just like many other commuter type of vehicles, it's best to just leave the transmission into D and let the computer decide which gear to choose. But while this powertrain is not that engaging to drive, it is pretty frugal on the fuel economy, at least for the size of SUVs that these two are. The Palisade is rated for 12.6 liters per 100 kilometers in a city and 9.5 liters per 100 kilometers on a highway. This Kia Telluride is a little bit worse, but not by much. It's rated for 12.8 liters per 100 kilometers in a city and 9.8 liters per 100 kilometers on a highway. I'm not sure why there's that discrepancy between the two. Maybe it's due to aerodynamics. I don't know. But in the real world, I can tell you that I actually have been getting slightly better fuel economy in the Palisade than I have with this Telluride. But they're both well within those fuel economy ratings. Now switching to the Palisade, you don't really notice dynamically wise that much of a difference between this and the Telluride. They're both pretty well planted around corners, but don't expect them to be anything like a, again, Acura MDX Type S or even a Mazda CX-9. So if you are looking for a more enjoyable driving three row SUV that doesn't break the bank, then Mazda CX-9 is still the one to look at. Having said that, again, both of these three row SUVs feel planted around corners. The steering firms up nicely as the speed builds. When you're parking either one of these two SUVs, steering is nice and light so it makes it easy to maneuver. They both also have a self-leveling system in the back. Now don't get fooled though, they don't have air suspension or some sort of external hydraulic pump that puts in more fluid into the shocks. It's a much more rudimentary type of self-leveling system. So the back shocks have different reservoirs with different valving and when you load up the Palisade or the Telluride with cargo or passengers or even towing something, then the back end will squat. 
and if you don't move the car you won't notice any sort of self-leveling action taking place. It's only when you start driving for a little bit and the shock absorbers have time to move up and down and move up and down a little bit more that the fluid moves from one reservoir to the other where it resists more of the bouncing as you drive over bumps. Now from my understanding and from what I've read on forums from other owners, the self-leveling system doesn't change the ride height all that much. Essentially what it's there for is to prevent the back end from bottoming out whenever you hit a particularly big bump. So if that's what it was intended to do then it could work. Again, I have not had a chance to fully load up either of these two SUVs with passengers, cargo or tow something out the back. With these SUVs being family vehicles, it's important that they have smooth rides. I'm glad to say that they both do. There isn't much of a difference between the two when it comes to driving over poorly maintained pavement. However, the seats in the Hyundai Palisade provide a bit more cushion from the bumps in the road than the seats in the Kia Telluride. The calligraphy trim of the Palisade also incorporates Ergo Motion Seat, which is not a massage feature per se, but it does help with reducing pressure points and to promote blood circulation on longer drives. The Kia Telluride does not have this option, but it will adjust the lumbar every 30 or 60 minutes to try to replicate this ergo motion feature that the Palisade has. Now let's look at the insides of these two cars and let's start with the Kia Telluride. So space up here in the front seats is more than plentiful as one would expect. I'm 6 foot 4 and I can't complain for legroom and I can't complain for headroom. In the second row it's pretty spacious as well. You can get a bench seat but higher up trims get captain's chairs like this one. I have more than enough legroom behind my seating position and also more than enough headroom. The seat does slide forwards and backwards and can recline quite a bit. The second row seats are heated and ventilated on this X-Line trim and you also get sunshades or peasant blockers as some other people like to call them and also a three zone climate control. Getting into the third row is pretty simple. There's a button at the bottom and at the top of the second row seat. You can use whichever you want and it slides forward making it easier to get in and out of that third row. Now with the second row seat moved to its most backward position, it doesn't leave a whole lot of leg space for that third row occupant. However, if the person sitting in the second row is a little bit more generous with their leg space, then there's actually quite enough leg space for the third row occupants. Headroom though is a little tight, my hair is right up against the headliner. But while that third row is not as spacious as the third row in a GMC Yukon or Chevy Tahoe for example, it's not too bad for shorter journeys. Back here in the front, this X-Line trim looks fantastic on the inside. I really like this tan leather that's on the seats as well as the center portions of the dashboard and center console as well as the door panels. It makes a nice contrast against the black dashboard and the unfortunately piano gloss black plastics on the center console. But when it's all nice and clean, again, it looks really, really good. If you think that the Kia Telluride is a little bit too dark because of the black headliner and other black trim pieces, then you can get it with a brighter headliner and a much brighter interior, just like in the Palisade. However, as far as I can tell, that's only for the American market. Here in Canada, we don't really have that many options when it comes to the color of the leather and the headliner, as you guys do in the United States. At least that's what I could figure out from looking at both the Kia Canada and the American Kia website. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But again, overall, this interior looks really good apart from the gloss black plastic right here on the center console, which is already attracting fingerprints dust and a few scratches so it's going to look really bad after a few years however using all of the controls are really straightforward and they're pretty much dummy proof every single climate control has its own dedicated button or knob for the temperature there's also knobs for the radio volume as well as radio tuning and quick access buttons for the map the radio media favorites and you also get nice toggle switches for the heated and ventilated seats. So 
really straightforward and again idiot proof to use the interior in this Kia Telluride. So now let's go check out the Hyundai Palisade. The Palisade has the same amount of space as the Telluride for all three rows of seating. So up here in the front, legroom, headroom, not a problem whatsoever. In the second row, again, legroom and headroom are more than plentiful for my tall height behind even my six foot four driving position. The Palisade is also available with bench seating, depending on the trim level, of course, but these captain's chairs are pretty comfortable. They do slide forwards and backwards and recline just as much as in the Telluride. There are armrests in the center of each seat, and you do also get sunshades, heated seats, and a separate climate zone. You do not get ventilated seats on this particular Palisade because it is a more mid-level trim than the Kia Telluride. In the third row, again, getting in and out is just as simple as in the Telluride. Push of a button slides the seat forward and makes it easier for you to get in and out of the third row. Same story for space. If the second row seat is all the way to the back, you don't have a whole lot of legroom. But if the second row passenger is more generous with their positioning, then you do get more legroom. However, one thing that the Telluride doesn't have and this Palisade does have is electronically reclining third row seats. So at a push of a button, you can recline or move the third row seats a little bit more forward so you're more upright. Back here in the front, as I said, this Palisade is not a top spec trim like the Kia Telluride. It's more of a mid-level trim. It's called the Urban here in Canada. In the United States, I think it's called the XRT or XTR. Some stupid name that the marketing department gave it. They should have just called it the Urban like how it is here in Canada. So in terms of features, it doesn't quite have as many as the Telluride, but they are available on the calligraphy trim, which is the top spec trim of the Palisade. In terms of how everything looks and functions in this Palisade, the controls all have their own individual buttons. However, for the calligraphy trim, some of the climate control functions are displayed on a touchscreen instead of each individual button, like for example the fan speed. Now if you've watched any of my previous videos, then you know that I'm not a big fan of touchscreen controls, especially for functions that are very commonly used, like the climate. But with this urban trim, you do get individual buttons for each and every single function. I'm also okay with the gear selector, which are buttons instead of a regular shifter like how it is in the Telluride. In the center console, you do have quite a lot of space and you also have these funky cup holders, which you push a button and they pop into place. It makes you feel like a little kid and they'll hold a medium double-double just fine. Also, you would get a wireless phone charging pad in the calligraphy trim, but again, this one is the mid-level urban trim so you don't have it you just have a whole lot of space with a usb port as for the design of this interior i do like their choice of textures on the center console and on the dashboard and also on the door panels but with the gray center console the gray leather and the gray headliner it just looks very plasticky to me but you can get it in black leather and with a black headliner the infotainment system is the same in both of these vehicles, although they do have different colors and the radio looks different as well. However, it's really easy to use, it's easy to navigate around, and while it does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, neither the Palisade or the Telluride have them as wireless. In fact, I don't think I've seen wireless CarPlay or wireless Android Auto in any Hyundai, Kia or Genesis vehicle. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. But again, the infotainment, really easy to use. And overall, the Palisade is straightforward, just like in the Kia. That is, unless you go for the calligraphy trim, in which case you get that touchscreen for the climate controls, which I'm not a fan of. Behind the seats, both SUVs have a lot of space, but it's the Kia that has just a little bit more with all rows of seats up. It has 601 liters versus the Palisade's 509 liters. I suspect this is because the Telluride has a slightly larger storage compartment under the floor than the Palisade. Folding down the third row seats electronically in the Palisade will allow for 1,304 liters in the Kia and 1,297 liters in the Hyundai. And finally, with all rows of seats folded, the Kia Telluride has 2,455 liters of space 
and the Hyundai Palisade has 2,447 liters of cargo space. Between the two, it's actually the Kia that's more expensive. The 2023 Kia Telluride starts at $50,195 Canadian, and this X-Line trim will cost you $61,195 Canadian. Here in Canada, there's also the X-Pro trim, but as far as I can tell, it only adds some slightly more off-road tires and 18-inch wheels. It has the same gadgets as this X-Line. The 2023 Hyundai Palisade starts at about $48,000 Canadian for the preferred trim, while this urban trim will cost you $53,199. The top spec calligraphy trim costs $56,799 Canadian. These two are not similar trim levels, and it's a good thing because you can easily see what is and isn't available on the lower trims. Starting with the Palisade first, it has leatherette upholstery, heated and ventilated front seats, heated steering wheel, heated second row seats, a power sunroof, power tailgate, surround view cameras, three zone automatic climate control, satellite navigation, second row sunshades, parking sensors, and driver's memory seat. A pretty good amount of gadgets. If you move up to the calligraphy trim of the Palisade, you'll get pretty much the same gadgets that this Telluride X-Line comes equipped with. It has the same features as mentioned in the Palisade Urban, but it adds ventilated second row seats, a head-up display, leather upholstery, wireless phone charging pad, which is actually standard on all Telluride trims here in Canada, a second sunroof, however, it does not open even though the control to open and close the sunshade makes it look like as though the sunroof does open. Bit of a weird one that. And finally, there's also a rear camera mirror. I should mention that these features are not packaged the same way between the Canadian and American markets. The most substantial update for the 2023 model year has to do with how these SUVs look. And on the Kia, unfortunately, it loses the round amber daytime running lights. Instead, they're replaced by two vertical white daytime running lights, but they do double as the turn signals. The rest of the front end has had a few tweaks here and there, but nothing too substantial. The Hyundai, on the other hand, has had more of an update. New grille and new daytime running lights, which look like they're straight out of the Tron Legacy movie. I really dig how they look. Plus, I really like how the turn signals are integrated into the grille. Overall, between the two, this one definitely looks sharper. Neither of these new 2023 models have been tested by the IIHS at the time that I'm filming this video but the previous model years received a top safety pick and a top safety pick plus award. The Palisade was the one that received the latter of those awards. I would be surprised if the updated 2023 models didn't receive the same awards as well. Both SUVs come equipped with most of the available safety and driver aids such as automatic emergency braking, lane keep, blind spot sensors, and adaptive cruise control to name a few. However, other features such as highway driving assist, side blind zone view, and front parking sensors, among a few others, are only available on mid-level or top-spec trims. Now, before we get to which one is better, both of these SUVs are excellent family vehicles. They've both won countless awards from multiple publications, and it's easy to see why. They're spacious, safe, easy to drive, packed with features, and well thought out for a family's needs. Now, which one is best? Well, that really depends on personal preference, because they're so similar. So it comes down to looks. Do you like the look of this one over this one? Do you prefer the climate controls of the Palisade or the climate controls of the Kia Telluride? For me personally, I prefer the looks of this Palisade, but I do like the dummy proof controls of the Kia Telluride, especially if you buy the calligraphy, calligraphy version of the Palisade. Try saying that three times really quick. But I also do like the comfort of the seats in this Palisade over the comfort of the seats in this Kia Telluride. So for me, I'm leaning more towards the Palisade. But what about you? Which one would you pick? Palisade, Telluride. Let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to know more about either of these two SUVs, I wrote a more detailed comparison review of them over on my website. 
you can find that link in the video description or click on the pop-up banner right up there. And as always, I will see you in the next car or truck or most likely another SUV like these two. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.